Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Indian court orders Rahul Gandhi to two years in jail for Modi comment, 30 days to appeal. Pakistan PM says political chaos main reason for economic instability. And soaring food prices weigh heavy on Bangladeshis ahead of Ramadan. And now for all the details. A court in Western India found opposition leader Rahul Gandhi guilty of defamation on Thursday for a speech he made in 2019 in which he referred to the thieves as having the surname Modi and sentenced him to two years in prison. He was, however, given bail and the sentence was suspended for 30 days. India's main opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi was found guilty of defamation by a court in western Surat city on Thursday, which sentenced him to two years in prison for a speech he made during 2019 election campaign. He was, however, granted bail and 30 days time to file an appeal. The criminal defamation case was filed by Purnesh Modi, a leader of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP, over the 2019 speech in which Gandhi had referred to thieves as having the surname Modi. Rahul Gandhi said he had made the comment to highlight corruption and was not against any community. Kolar me Congress ke tatkalin pramuk Sriman Rahul Gandhi dwara jo sabha ayojit ki gayi unme unka bhasan tha. Sabhi choro ka upna Modi kyu? और भी दोनों कितने मोदी निकलेंगे इस अनुसंधान में यहां सूरत की कोर्ट में फरियाद की गई आज उनका जो फैसला आया है मैं उस फैसला का स्वागत करता हूं प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ कांग्रेस पार्टी ऑन ट्विटर कॉल्ड पीएम मोदीज गवर्नमेंट कावर्डली एंड डिक्टेटोरियल कांग्रेस वर्कर्स आल्सो हेल्ड प्रोटेस्ट अक्रॉस इंडिया ओवर द वर्डिक्ट Gandhi's once dominant Congress controls less than 10% of the elected seats in Parliament's lower house and has lost badly to the BJP in two successive general elections. The BJP is widely expected to win a third victory at the next general election in 2024. Moving on, British Foreign Minister James Cleverly has said the country will review security at the Indian High Commission in London following unacceptable acts of violence. His remarks came after India this week summoned so the most the senior British diplomat in New Delhi to protest the actions taken by separatist and extremist elements against the country's mission in London and the absence of British security around the premises. The protesters with Khalistan banners had detached the Indian flag at the building on Sunday to protest the recent police action in India's Punjab state. On Wednesday, scores of police officers were standing guard on both sides of the road outside the Indian diplomatic mission in London. Cleverly said that police investigation was ongoing and the UK will make the necessary changes to ensure the safety of the Indian mission staff. And Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Thursday pinned the political chaos as the main reason for his country's economic instability. Sharif, in an address on the 83rd Pakistan Day, urged citizens not to lose sight of the challenges staring the country. He said the challenges are topped by inability to settle the rules of the game. The statement came a week after a political standoff, which saw clashes between supporters of former Premier Imran Khan and security forces amid multiple legal proceedings against the former cricket star. Recent measures to secure an IMF loan, including reversal of subsidies and a hike in energy and fuel prices, have fueled 50-year record high inflation. The $1.1 billion IMF bailout is critical to avoid defaulting on external debt obligations. Well, moving on, Pashtun political activist Fazal Rahman Afridi during the UNHRC session in Geneva exposed Islamabad for its close ties with militant group Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. He said the deteriorating security situation in the tribal areas bordering Afghanistan is having grave implications, especially for the ethnic Pashtun community. Fazal Rahman Afridi, a Pashtun political activist, in his intervention at the UNHRC session in Geneva, exposed Pakistan for its close ties with militant group TTP, the Tehreek-e-Taliban, Pakistan. 
Afridi said there has been an unannounced deal between Islamabad and TTP to hand over Pashtun-dominated tribal areas to the militant group to be ruled under Sharia laws. He highlighted a deteriorating security situation and said it will have grave implications for the fundamental rights and lives of the ethnic Pashtuns. He also demanded a probe into the deadly attack in Peshawar in January which claimed over 100 lives. As per the, de per the deal, about 44,000 TTP militants and their families have to be resettled in KPK. Thousands of Pashtuns, particularly Pashtun Protection Movement, have demonstrated all over Pakistan against this deal and demonstrated their strong urge for peace in their land. On January 30, 2023, TTP, considered to be the proxy of Pakistan military establishment, carried out one of the bloodiest suicide attacks, resulting in killing of at least 101 and injuring of 217 uh, 217 Pashtuns in civil lines Peshawar. Sydney-based Institute for Economics and Peace in a recent report highlighted Afghanistan and Pakistan to be among the 10 countries most affected by terrorism in 2022. Activists have long blamed Pakistan's sponsors terrorism for ideological reasons, but it has now led to bleeding the country itself. The continued ban on girls from pursuing education in Afghanistan in the new solar year has sparked a number of reactions throughout the world. UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund executive Catherine Russell in a statement warned the move will also have far-reaching consequences for the country's economy and health system. The UN Human Rights Office spokesperson Marta Hatado said that the denial of secondary school education and then of access to university is manifestly discriminatory and profoundly distressing for girls and women. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also said that the current government of Afghanistan will not stop violating human rights until they deprive access to education to girls. It is not possible to normalize ties. The country's economy has been severely hampered due to frozen bank assets and stalled development aid amid sanctions. And as the holy month of Ramadan begins, the residents in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka said they are struggling under the effects of high inflation, especially on food prices as they prepare for the Muslim fasting month. Long queues were seen forming at trucks selling government-subsidized commodities such as rice and flour as part of the open market sales program intended to combat soaring food prices. Local market vendors complain they are seeing few customers, with some blaming the economic condition of the country for the less crowd in the markets. Although higher food costs are common ahead of Ramadan, rising inflation and disrupted food supply chains due to international crises such as the COVID pandemic and the war in Ukraine has caused relentless price hikes in Bangladesh, which is already battling energy shortages and a sliding currency. And in a first-of-its-kind invention, 60-year-old Muriraj from India's southern Coimbatore city has claimed to have invented a pocket calendar that can show the dates and days for an infinite number of years. The 24-page calendar topples a record by an Australian who designed a calendar for 400 years. Muniraj says his new calendar is an update from his own 30-page version of the same, which could tell the dates for the next 2 billion years. Muniraj, who is a 10th grade school dropout and former proofreader, aims to make the calendar a useful tool for not just academic purposes, but also for scientific study of the movement of planets. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.